Hello, I'm Miss Laura with the Wichita Falls Arts Council, and today we're going to make a bead lizard or snake. I'll be making the lizard, but the instructions for the beginning of the lizard are uh, will work for the entire snake if you choose to do the snake. Um, this is a finished bead lizard. Here are the plans that are colored in, and then the corresponding bead lizard, which has the same pattern as the drawing. Here's a different bead lizard that was colored in. Here's the lizard that was created by following this pattern right here. And then I have a snake with an entirely different pattern. And here's that snake. Okay, so we're gonna need the sheet right here with our bead lizard diagram and snake diagram. You're gonna choose one of these animals to create um, and you're gonna color in these individual beads. So all of these ovals represent an individual bead that we'll string together to create our lizard or snake. Um, you can use colored pencils, markers, crayons, anything. Um, just make sure that you're using colors that represent the beads available. Your colors may be different than mine. So just use colors that you have. Okay, so I'm going to color in some of these beads. You don't need to color them in perfectly. You can just sort of scribble a color like I just did in this little pink area here. If you want to keep beads white, you can just avoid coloring them in or leave them blank. They recommend taking about five minutes to color in your design, and then we'll move on to the next step. So I've already pre-colored in a lizard. So I'm gonna go step by step and create this lizard, li lizard using um, the pattern that I've created by coloring in these individual beads. Um, we're gonna need a clasp, a little lobster clasp with a tiny swiveling circle at the bottom. And then I also have a pre-cut piece of string. It's a little bit longer than three feet, which gives me enough room to create the lizard. Um, the snake should take a little less string. I'm going to put my pattern to the side and I need to attach my string to the clasp. And I'm going to do this using a very simple knot called a cow hitch or lark's head knot. So here is sort of a blown up drawing of how the string gets attached. So this is the string, we have a little loop here, and this is the bottom of the clasp, that little part that swivels. So I'm going to take my string, I'm going to find both ends, and I'm going to put them together, and then grab the rest of my string here. Um, I'm going to thread both these ends holding them with one hand, grabbing my clasp with the other hand. And I'm gonna thread both of these strings through the little swivel portion. And I'm gonna keep pulling them up. And I'm gonna stop pulling them up um, by the time I get to my, sort of like the end or the halfway point of my string. I don't wanna pull this all the way through. I wanna leave just this little bit. Um, I'm gonna take these two ends and I'm going to stick them through this loop that I've created. So I'm sticking the ends through the loop and I'm holding them with my left hand, both of them. And then I'm gonna grab my clasp with my right hand. I'm just gonna pull both ends apart until I end up with a nice knot at the end. Or I think it's at the beginning of my little swivel. And it should look just like this knot here. Because I've attached the middle of my string, 
I now have essentially two strings coming from the top of my class. I'm going to separate them just so they're sitting apart from each other. And now I have a left string and a right string. I'm going to grab my diagram that I've colored in. And starting from the top, I'm going to work my way down the lizard. So the first bead that I'm going to string on will be this little lizard's nose or snake nose. Should be that bead right there, the bead closest to the top of the clasp, closest to the clasp. So you're going to locate whatever color um, you've colored in. So I've colored in blue. So I'm going to find a blue bead. If you colored it, that first bead in orange, you're going to find an orange bead. I always start with a left string and then I work from left to right um, when I'm reading the beads row by row and uh, when I'm choosing which string to use first. So I'm starting with my left string and I'm going to stick the bead on to my left string and bring it almost up to the top. I'm now going to grab my right string, a string that has not gone through anything, and I'm going to bead it through, or I'm going to thread it through that same bead that I just strung on, bead number one, but I'm going to go in the opposite direction. I don't want to go in the same direction that the left string went. I'm going to go in the opposite direction and string it through that first bead. I'm going to pull both ends of my right and my left string until my bead sits right at the top of my clasp. Okay, so I've just finished row number one. Um, if a lot of your colors are the same, sometimes it's helpful to sort of check off that you finished a row. So I finished this first row, and I'm going to move on to my second. I have two different colors here. I have a pink and a yellow, oh, a pink and an orange. Um, and I'm always going from left to right when I'm using my left string first, or when I'm reading these beads in order, or identifying the beads in order. So I'm gonna find a pink bead and then an orange bead. Pink and orange. I'm going to always start with my left string and a bead in that order. Left to right, pink, and then orange. Both beads go on the string. And then I'm going to get my right string and bead it or thread it through in the opposite direction. And I'm gonna pull both strings until both beads slide up to the top. Okay, so I finished row number two. I'm gonna move on to number three. Same thing, going from left to right, I have black, white, then black. So I'm gonna bead in that order, starting with my left string. Black, white, black. The next row, yellow, pink. Starting with my left string and then threading through in the opposite direction with my right string. You want to keep doing this going line by line until you get to row five. After row five, you're going to need to do the arms. You can't go past row five without doing the arms. If you're doing the snake, you're just going to continue working your way down until you get to the end. Um, the instructions are the same. Just follow the beads or the bead colors that you've drawn in. I'm going to explain how to do the arms. We're going to have a right arm and a left arm. I'm going to start with my left arm just because I've been starting with the left on everything else. And let's just be consistent. 
So I'm going to look at my little arm, my left arm on my lizard, and I'm going to look at the little string going through all of the beads in the diagram. So this little line, there's these lines, they're going through the beads. This is my string. And if I look at how this left string exits this yellow bead right here, it goes into a green bead, and then it goes into a pink bead, then through a dark blue bead, then through a yellow bead, a white bead, and then it goes back through the pink and then the green, and then it continues on to row number six, which is purple, white, and red. The right side does the exact same thing. It goes through two beads, another three beads, and it goes back through the first two. So all we have to do is really look at the direction, how the string goes through as we're working our way down our lizard. So I'm going to string the beads in that order. So it's going to go through a green bead, a pink bead, a blue bead, a yellow bead, and then a white bead, and then back through pink and then green. So if it's helpful to write down this order, you can also do this on the other side. Just looking at how the string or the order that the string goes through the beads. Okay. So I'm going to take my left string first because I'm doing my left arm. And I'm going to string through a green bead. A pink bead. A blue bead. Um, a yellow bead. And then a white bead. Okay, so if I look at my diagram, I have five beads that make up my arm, and I have five beads that are on my left string to make my left arm. So again, I'm following directions. I'm looking at the string. It's going through the first five, and then it goes back through the first two. So I like to separate my little beads into a group of three and then a group of two closer to my lizard. And I'm going to take my string, again, still using just the left string for the left arm, and I'm gonna go backwards through my first two beads. For me, that is my pink bead and my green bead. And I'm gonna pull this string until everything is tight. Okay, so I finished my left arm. I'm gonna do the same thing with my right arm. I'm gonna go in the order in which the string goes through the beads. I'm gonna go orange, red. Pink, green, white. Okay, once all five beads are on, the string that I'm trying to make my arm from, I'm going to go back through. We're separating a group of two and a group of three. Two is closer to the body of my lizard. I'm going to go back through those first two. And then pull this string tight. Move the beads around so they sit nicer or more nicely. Okay, so now I have two arms. And once I have my arms, if we look at the string, it just continues into the next line. So for me, I'm gonna start with my left always, and I'm gonna go purple, white, red. I'm gonna continue making my way down the lizard I have a set of legs coming up after this little row of two, and the legs are exactly the same as the arms. You're just going to bead them in the order that that little string passes through them. And then once you have that leg completed, you're gonna move on and then 
the tail are just single beads that you're beating through just like you did the little nose in the beginning.
Okay, once you're finished beading on your last bead, that should be the end of the tail. If you've run out of string, it's okay to make a slightly shorter tail. Um, or you could try to make a little bit of room by holding both ends. And this is also good to do if your lizard is very loose. You can hold both ends with one hand, like I'm doing here with my left hand. And then starting at the nose area, just sort of slide row by row so that these beads, beads sit uh, closer to the top. And once you're done, you can just double knot, tying one knot, and then an additional knot to keep the beads from sliding off. If you have extra string, you can trim it, or you can keep it as a, a fun little extra.